Welcome back to What the Flick. I'm Matt. That's Alonzo. This is Christy. Uh, it is, I don't know, maybe not a great week to stay home, at least according to what's being released uh, on home video, because we were struggling to find interesting choices this week. I didn't I, struggle. I'm very happy well, with mine's mine. Mine's awesome. Okay. <laughs> and if you guys are cooler than me. It is still snowing in certain right. parts of North America, so. Well, uh, <laughs> and we, we had talked earlier before the show about what we were going to pick this week, and then it turns out actually, uh, before this break, we were talking a little bit about uh, Lost in Space, yes. which I had wanted to see this weekend. But as I mentioned, I'm still about halfway through Jessica Jones. Right. And my wife says, hey, let's start Lost in Space. And I said, well, maybe Gabe doesn't want to see that. And she's like, well, I don't care. We're going to watch it. And I said, no, no, we're halfway through Jessica Jones. We're not starting another show. And then I have to wait to finish Jessica Gabe Jones. Gabe should actually watch Lost in Space because uh, it it is not contingent upon you having seen the previous show or even the movie. Good. Uh, and and the kids. And it's a very mm -hmm. family friendly okay. show, but still very tense and exciting and interesting. And um, I was just saying before the break, like this is one of the best pilots I've ever huh. seen because you kind of walk into this thinking you know the family dynamic, but you don't. And by the end of it, you don't know it all of it, but you've been given enough hints along the way of like, oh, this is a lot more complicated than I thought it was gonna be. This is not just, you know, gung-ho, you know, like, uh, uh, who played the mom in the original one? I'm blanking on her name from, she, she Car was on Car Petticoat Ride? Junk. No, no, that was no, the daughter. Right. Um, anyway, anyway, you know who I'm talking about. You're just gonna say it in the comments. Anyway. Oh, man, I haven't uh, gone to Petticoat Junction in years. It's great. Uh, like Parker Posey's Dr. Smith doesn't even turn up to like the last 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, which was the only reason I wanted to watch in the first place, but now I'm totally sucked in just from the one, from the pilot. Also check out the other pilot I watched, I can't, I don't I don't have time to binge. I don't know if y'all can do that, good for you. But mm -hmm. I watched the first episode of On My Block. What's that? Another Netflix show. Okay. Okay. It is sort of like the movie Dope filtered oh. through Degrassi. Oh. It's about like this group of friends living in what I guess is South Central. And uh, you know, sort of dealing with, it's kind of coming of age, we're about to start high school, we're sort of smart and nerdy. But there are gangs and there are, you know, okay. like all these things around them. It's the first episode is really smart and funny. They keep <laughs> making television shows at Netflix. Who Nobody can keep has up? Time to exactly. watch them. Who exactly. can keep up? Yeah, we were going to start watching that um, with Gabe, but he was busy playing Fortnite, uh, which is all he plays. Those of you who play, you know, I've got one of those kids that's a teenager and he plays like four or five hours a day, and uh, it's the people that people like. He's one of the players that. People like I've heard Amir and Hassan complain about these teenagers are too good because they've got nothing else to do but play uh. Fortnite. It's a it's an online combat game. I don't want to know about it yet. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, anyway, now, uh, now, now, now that I, being said, let's my, actually my, talk. My about home video pick is actually for anybody out there who doesn't have Netflix or is a super fan and just has to own all the things. Mystery Science Theater season eleven just got released <laughs> by or is getting released this week by Shout Factory. Uh, it features the brand new season of the show. Uh, you know, Joel Hodgson is back, but Jonah Ray is now in the host position. Uh, Elliot Kalin, if you listen to the Flophouse podcast, or he was head writer for The Daily Show for years, is now head writer for MST. Uh, a great season, smart, funny, Patton Oswalt's in there, Felicia Day, a lot of fun people. Uh, uh, Baron Vaughn is the, the new voice of uh, Crow. Um, there's a Christmas movie, so of course I was down for that. The Blu-ray has a documentary kind of behind the scenes of getting the show back on and putting it back together and talking about, you know, a lot of the original MST folks make cameos. So if you are a giant nerd for that show like me, this mm -hmm. is one you'll want in your collection. That was a great series. Yes, it still is. Series. It still is. It still is. All right, mm -hmm. Christy, what is your pick for this so week? So I too have a particular set of skills. <laughs> and mine is to pick Liam Neeson movies for you to watch um, <laughs> on your television at home where you can tune in and out and not pay attention to whether they make sense or not because they don't always. So my pick is The Commuter, which we reviewed here when it came out theatrically back in January. It is your annual Liam neeson Damocle Syrah joint. <laughs> and uh, so we talked about it. This is basically Taken on a Train. Non He's taken the taking train. a train. Uh -huh. <laughs> Nonstop was taken on a plane. This is taken on a train. And so Liam Neeson is uh, is an insurance agent, and he's a former cop, and he gets because of course he is. Because of course we have to explain the set of skills, and um, he receives this totally contrived 
challenge one day on the commute home from New York on a very eventful day at his job. And uh, he has to figure out who on the train is a killer or has this nefarious plan. And they're omniscient and uh, omnipresent in hilarious ways. Um, when we reviewed it, Alonzo actually said, watch it on cable and then just turn it off at one point. <laughs> so this is your opportunity to do that. There you go. But it's fun, and one thing I like about it, besides, you know, it's it's got a ton of action, whatever, which you expect from a movie like this, but it's shot really well, and the visual effects are really cool, and they, they have inventive uses of the space within the train, and they're inside it and underneath it, and the, in, the way they go from one car to another is really cool, and so it, it's it's got more in its mind than just, like, here's Liam Mason getting into fist fights with people. Also, this movie came out before Black Panther, and it has Letitia Wright in it. Oh, right. Who are now oh, yeah. all madly in love. Yes, good point. And so anyway, it's um it's it's not as good as prime Liam Neeson Liam Neesoning, but it is solid. So that's okay. Yeah, and it, it's not the best of the Neeson Kalesara no. collaborations, no. but it's all right. Yes. All right. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with a movie that is available uh at the beginning, from the beginning of this month on Amazon Prime, uh, the classic Escape from New York, as directed by uh, John Carpenter, uh, stars Kurt Russell. Uh, this movie I watched about a year and a half ago. Um, it really, really holds up well. Uh, yeah, it's a little dated as far as the music and some of the technology, and that like there's a whole thing about a cassette tape. But uh, <laughs> I, this movie's great. Um, one of the, I think this is one of the really great collaborations between Carpenter and Kurt Russell. Um, we, we've also seen them together in The Thing and we saw them in uh, Big Trouble in Little China. I think if you go back and look at this, there's a little bit that Elvis. Russell's- Huh? Elvis. Oh, and Elvis, right. <laughs> Russell's definitely, I think subversively playing this a little bit for comedy um, in that he's really doing Clint Eastwood here. Like he's doing an over-the-top Clint Eastwood as Snake Plissken. Mm. Um, it's definitely kind of like the man with no name. Um, this is a brutal movie. It is violent, but you've got some great players in this. Uh, Ernest Borgnine's in this, and you've got... Um, Donald Pleasance. Donald Pleasance, uh, who is as creepy as always, uh, even though he's supposed to be the president. Uh, I, this movie, you can't go wrong with. It, it does have, you know, it's got the music. Got Lee Van Cleef in this. You know, it's it's the tough guy comes in. You know, New York has been turned into. I mean, you know the story. New York's been turned into a prison island, but I, it's terrific. And again, like I think this holds up really well. Uh, it's worth taking another look at, and especially because of some of the cast that's in this, right? Like, you've also got um, what's her name, who was married to uh, oh, Adrian Barbeau. Adrian Barbeau. Like, there's a lot of stars in this that you'll recognize. A lot of people that had worked with him before, but I, I think this movie is fantastic. It's exciting. Doesn't overstay its welcome. It's it's part of that kind of dystopian view that Carpenter would have on certain movies and certain kind of attitudes. Uh, I love this one, so I think it's totally worth seeing. Well, we showed a picture a second ago of, of you know of Kurt Russell with the eye patch, and yeah. it's such an iconic image. Like you know immediately what this is and who he is and why this matters culturally, it must have been in Ready Player One, right? Like there must be some reference to that movie of, of the myriad 80s movies that are in Ready Player One. I don't know, I mean, we Escape- slow it down and I'm not gonna look at it again to find out. No, yeah. nor am I, but it must be in there. <laughs> right, and Escape from LA kind of waters this down a little bit. Escape from LA is not nearly as good, but uh, this one's terrific. So those are our picks for this week. Uh, we've got Mystery Science Theater, the which season? Season 11. Season 11. And The Commuter, and I'm recommending on Amazon Prime, uh, Escape from New York, and I'll probably check out uh, Lost in Space on Netflix.